one is my right to wake up in the morning. I don't care what it is. You send them a fee schedule to let them know that violating any of your rights is worth, okay, what, $1 million? $1 million. Okay, now you got, I don't, so all your rights could fill this car lot if, you, if it's just your, your rights are imaginary car lot. So what you're saying to the government is, um, you're not negotiating at all. You want the government to know that when they come onto your car lot and they purchase a car, your price is clearly listed on the windshield and it's a million dollars and it's non-negotiable. At that point, it's their choice if they want to buy the car or not. And if they want to buy the car and kick your teeth in, then they're going to pay your price. And it's their choice at that point. And that's contract law. Yes. Because you've given them notice in advance that that is what your rights are. And if you don't like my prices, then don't buy cars from me. And that should be your attitude with the government. If you don't want to have to pay $11 billion, I don't care what it is, make it something ridiculous. I really don't care, right? Because we'll get into how you can enforce that. And it's been done. A trillion. Yeah. Um, once they know it's their choice to violate your rights, to buy that car that's worth that money, and that's contract law, and that's notice, you don't need to negotiate that. You can. But why would you? you? Of course you can send the government notice and say, well, I think my rights are worth a million dollars a piece. What do you think they're worth? But why would you? Right? It's your car lot. It's your cars for sale. And it's your price. And they've got the option of coming on to your property, which is your rights, trespassing on your, law, on your, your compound, and buying a car that's overpriced. And this is all just because it involves you. Like you are the it's ruler. It's your rules. It's your stomach. You rule your domain. You, 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 you. you. Your rights, your body, your world. they're yours. And they're worth what you say they're worth. And you have the right to do anything you want as long as you cause no harm. The claim of right is unnecessary. It's unnecessary because if you want to establish what your rights are, you do what I tell you to do and you, t you send them a notice saying, you got 21 days to tell me what, uh, send me a, a, a fact. Send me some facts, some evidence of what you're claiming I cannot do. Let's start there. But we're not trying to think that way anymore because of the public schools. Can totally get behind that. They yes. Don't that so like right. If they don't reply, then I guess other than doing no harm, you can do anything you want. Are they going to send you notice back that says, yeah, you're obligated to obey all these statutes? You think they're going to actually respond to that? No. They're not going to, well, yeah, you need a license to drive. They're not going to reply. Believe me, I've got a file cabinet full of legal letters that they have not replied to ever, and they never will. Because they know that I know who I am. I'm the executor and the beneficiary of my estate. And that's what it boils down to. And I'm going to tell the trustee what I think my shit's worth. Pardon my French, I'm a contractor. The right? very first step is taking a accountability for your actions. Ah, that's a whole other lesson in itself is assuming liability, right? <coughs> Just a teaser on that. Everybody is scared of this whole liability thing. Oh my God, I'm not assuming liability. That means I'll have to like pay, right? No, 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 no. That's what we've been trained. Again, that's the whole the brainwashing thing, right? He who assigns liability is in the seat of power because you're the one that's liable. So you're the one that dictates because it's on you. You're the one liable, which means you're telling everybody else what to do, right? So because government has trained everybody to, oh, yeah, hey, hey, we'll step in and we'll assume liability for everybody. So when you're out there driving on the roads, you get an accident, hell, we'll just buy you a new car. We'll pay for the hospital bills. We'll do everything. We'll assume all liability. Just contract with us. And why? Because when they assume all liability, they control because they're the ones that are assuming the risk. And we can get into that on another one. So they dictate the terms. So they dictate the terms. So you want to dictate the terms. They're a limited liability corporation. What are they compared to you? A full liability man. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the one I've told you guys before about. We've, we've used the poker game 
uh, analogy for what that's all about. For the poker game, right? We're playing Texas Hold'em. And when I go all in with one of my claims, which is an affidavit, I'm going all in with full commercial liability. This guy over here has half the chips. He's limited liability. He can't swear out an affidavit. He's a corporation. doesn't really exist. He's limited liability. He's, he, can't, he can't match what I put in. I win by default. Plain and simple. That's how that works. They can never match us. Ever. And that's why it's okay to just to walk in and say, yeah, I'm that name. I'm full liability. I'm a man. All my rights are intact. And uh, I'm the heir and executor of these proceedings. What's going on? So it's not about the name, it's who you are, the player that you are in that game. Your name's irrelevant. But they want you to think it's all about the name. That's probably why half that disinformation's out there. Yeah. Absolutely. And there's a lot of yep. So uh, people are playing hockey, and there's all these players out there, and they all, got, uh, they all got names on their jerseys. What's important? The name on the jersey, or what position they're playing? But their position, what player are they? Are you center? Are you defense? You know, what are you? Oh, he's, uh, he's, he's John. Well, what does that tell me? It doesn't tell me anything. What actual function does he carry out on that hockey arena? Think of this uh, when you're on board yeah. ship. John doesn't carry me. John doesn't tell me anything. Yeah, there you go, captain. Well, who's that guy? That's oh, Fred. Well, who the hell's Fred? Well, he's the captain. Oh, oh, that's who he is. Well, I don't even care if his name's Fred. I just wanted to know that he was the captain. Because now I know what role he's playing. And that sets the stage for your conduct with that individual. Not his name, the role he's playing. That's very important fundamental. Oh, absolutely. And who's doing that in court? Nobody. They're walking in and saying, I'm not that name, I'm this name. And they're saying, I don't give a shit what name you are. Because you're the trustee. So that's like a straw man argument they use again. Pretty much, and that's why people are losing every day using those arguments and going to jail. Yep. Because the name is irrelevant, they want you to think it's about the name, because ultimately your name is man. Beyond that, doesn't matter. And if you're a man, you are the beneficiary and executor. Plain and simple. That's one heck of a lesson. Yeah, that's good, man. Right there. That's, that's just the beginning. So yeah, maybe when, uh, we'll uh, end this. So we'll end it there. Uh, <laughs> many, yeah, many more to come. Uh, hopefully, like I say, that was uh, once people kind of wrap their head around that and they see the truth of it. Um, the, the possibilities from there just just they just explode in your mind, and you start to realize who you actually are. You've probably heard people talk about that before. Once you understand who you are, blah blah blah. But then they go off on an, a straw man argument. Right, that didn't make sense to me. Right. Who you are. What, what yeah. does that mean? Is that some new age yeah, shit? Yeah. You, you got to know what role you're here to play. Yeah. Good. That's yeah. what's important. Yeah. Does it matter what you call the, the, the king chess piece on the board? Oh, I named that one Frank. Oh. Well, what does Frank do? Well, he's the king. Oh. Well, figure it this way. Uh, well, that changes things. <laughs> it's, it's like that Humpty Dumpty quote where it's like, all that matters is who is master and who is servant. That's the roles. Figure out who the roles are. I said that in court on, I think, January 4th when I was in where I said, well, I said, excuse me. I said, clerk, I'm just trying to figure out what roles everybody's playing here. I said, and I know I'm the beneficiary. I said, who did you appoint the trustee? And she just went... And there was about a minute of that. I was like, I was like, okay. I said, apparently you're not going to tell me who the trust is, trustee is. So I'm just going to assume it's that guy. Oh, is this that free man stuff? You know, blah blah. You know, they started that kind of thing. And I just said, well, I don't. I'm not here to even make that argument. I'm not going to talk to you about it. Yeah. And that's exactly what you're going to say. And even if you are pegged down as, uh, like. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what should we call it? Uh, what should we call it? This Freeman philosophy or this Freeman group or this Freeman association or whatever? 
uh, we're all like spiritual beings. Like we all uh, discover our own lessons on our own or whatever. Yeah. You don't have to identify with it. And if some judge is going to come down on you because you identify with these uh, free man philosophies or... That's an, atten that's an attempt to, to, to humiliate you and ridicule you. Yeah. To make your... Really yeah, it, to, to make your argument seem like, oh, you're one of those guys, you know, like... No violation. The rights and the charter rights is no discrimination for beliefs or associations, blah, blah, blah. Statutes, what do I care? That's public yeah. servant codes. <laughs> that's irrelevant. That's for trustees to follow. I'm not a trustee, so I could care less what their what the the, the, the criminal code of Canada actually, says. Actually, that's something else that we could get onto in another uh, another time. Yeah. Installment is uh, the role of enforcement officers as to whether or not they can be witnesses. Yes. Because they're supposed to be neutral in the whole scheme. Yeah, they serve a different capacity. Right. So we haven't that's really we haven't really even fully explored that one yet. Yeah, yeah but. Yeah, but talking to sheriffs, I'm in the courthouse quite a bit, believe me. Um, and I just talk, I just like to walk up to sheriffs, and I'm like, so how do you like being a sheriff? You know, and they'll be like, oh, you know, it's pretty good. And he goes, well, we don't get to carry guns. And I'm like, yeah, but law's not really about who carries the biggest gun, is it? And they're like, no, it's not. And they smile, and they know, eh? And I'm like, because you guys are the highest authority on the land, right? And I say, do cops even know that? And they're like, no, I don't think they know that. And I said, it sucks you guys are, are, are paid less than them, because, uh, you know, considering you guys are the highest authority on the land, you should be paid more than anybody because you got more jurisdiction than them. And they smile. They know exactly. They know exactly. They're taught all about human rights and this stuff. They I know had it's... a really good chat with in court one day. Yeah. And, they're, and a lot of them are nice guys. Yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. asked what it was like. Where do you find out your man is very funny? Well, court rules back to the Sheriff's Act. But uh, that crazy. stuff, like, but that's it's like, goes all the way back to, like, all this other stuff. And that just basically explains certain things that we have that we yeah. don't do anymore, but we still can do. Exactly. We just don't. Okay, so I guess, I don't know, if even if people are still rolling, that sums up the first one here. And uh, like I say, every meeting hopefully will continue to bring people up to speed more and more on what we're doing. Uh, I'm hoping to be back for next Tuesday. Uh, and I'd like...